hello friends and welcome to yet another video of mine in this video i want to show you how you can calculate the payback period um, uh, whenever you have a tax like that in fact what we want to do is um, to create a model that you could have as a template to calculate your payback period in most cases calculating the payback period has uh, to do with uh, some very lengthy formulas uh, in Excel so in this tutorial we want to just understand step by step how we can calculate it, understand what is happening and then see how this can be modeled so let's assume that we have this five years the five the first year being uh, the year in which we invest uh, some amount of money build up uh, the necessary things we need to make uh, uh, positive cash flows in the future and then the outer years we have our cash flows so the question is uh, when will be our payback period so one of the very easy and simple ways for you to to, to do this is um, to simply um, use the sum function to do a cumulative sum so what i mean by cumulative sum we use the sum function sum in this case b3 uh, to b3 yeah b3 to b3 so but because it's going to be a cumulative sum i want to copy this formula across these columns here i will make this column b to be fixed here so i have a dollar sign just before just before the the column identity b here so this is good to go so we copy it down here and so with simple eye inspection we see that we start uh, making uh positive uh cash inflows uh, uh in, in 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 the fifth year or year four after the year of um, of the cash outflow so here it simply shows that um, by simple count uh, we have five years so it's five years we start making um, a positive cash flow here so one way in which we could uh, also model this problem is to show uh, the number of years it will take and the number of months it will take for us to actually pay back uh, 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 our initial cash outflow so in this case we could use excel functions to find out find the last negative value amongst these values here and how can we do that one of the functions we could use to do that uh, is a function that appears in Excel version 2016 and above and that is the max if function max if max ifs function so the max if function has got this imputes or arguments that we have to enter the first is the max range this is the range where we want to find the max value so that's why we select this and then it says the criteria range this is also our criteria range so we're going to select that and then it's asking us what is the criteria so we're going to have a criteria of less than zero because we're looking for the 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 the, the last negative number so less than zero here and so with this we can implement our function what we see is negative 100 and so it has been able to pull out the last negative number here but what we want is the number of years up to this point up to this point so what we do is to uh, wrap this formula that we already have here we just wrap it with a match function match so we have a match function and we already know that this portion of our formula gives us um, gives us minus 100 here 
So that's just okay for us. So we're going to find what is its position in this range. So match, this is our lookup. Our lookup array is also this range, comma, and then our lookup type will be zero. So at this point we can hit, and you can see that it gives us the four years that uh, where we have our negative, the least negative uh, value here. So it tells us that at year four, we get the last negative value. Okay, so this we can say is years. And what I would do is just copy it and bring it somewhere here. Okay, so what if we want to find how many months? Because here we know that it's going to be five years that it's going to take, but um, we just want to find how many months within this 50 year that it's going to take. So what we can do is um, we, we, we can use some Excel functions to derive that number of months. So what we want to do in this case is that we want to find the fraction of this last negative balance and the next uh, cash inflow that comes uh, in. And that is that 1,200 because from this 1,200, we are going to pay off this hundred that is here. So, so what we're going to do to solve that problem is that we will need within here, we will need that portion of this formula that gives us the minus 100. And that is this. So I'm going to copy this, come here, equal to, and then paste it inside. So when we hit, you see that it gives us a negative 100 here which is fine. But remember, I want to find a fraction between this last negative and then the uh, last, uh, uh, and then the cash inflow rather in the fourth uh, year after the cash outflow. So what we're going to do here is we're going to have this, we want to take out this negative sign here. So I'm going to just have a minus there so it becomes positive. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to divide it by this 1,200 that is here. And for me to get that, uh, I want to use a modeling approach so that it can be adaptable to any other scenarios of cash outflows. So I'm going to use the index function. So the index function is going to pick it out for us. So the index function, I'm going to pick the array here and the uh, comma, which role? Well, we're just within a role, sorry, it should be this. So we're just within just one role. So we really don't, do not need to give it uh, any input for role, but rather the column. And you know, the column is going to be the fifth column here. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take this four here, whatever it is here, plus one. And so this would give us what we want. So here it is, this is what we want. Now, while this is just uh, a decimal, uh, we want to have it in months. So what we do is that this entire formula that we have entered here, we just need to uh, multiply it by we just need to multiply it by 12 to give us uh, whatever it is in months. So here it is. So it gives us one month. So that's exactly what we get. So it's going to take us four years and one month to uh, pay back uh, our initial cash flow. Uh, so we, we might want to arrange it this way. Let me just take this, put it here. and uh, take um, this here and the months 
come here just for presentation, nothing else. Uh, I'll take them all to, okay. And then this, let's give it some breathing space. And uh, let me just give this a border. And, and here I'll just say, um, pay back period. So that's the payback period. It's going to pay back in four years and one month. So at this point, we can choose to make this maybe 1002. So you can see here, it's saying it's going to pay back in three years and 10, uh, uh, 10 months. So what if this was 2000? three years and two months so if it was this so you can see that hundred goes to the other year it goes to the uh the in the fourth year but just one month in there so this is how you could uh, uh model and calculate uh payback period uh, you could go through the video again the the important thing is for you to understand step by step how we came about our calculations here. So at first glance, this might look uh, very complex, but it is really not complex if you know uh, what makes up the parts that constitutes this whole. And then it makes it easy for you to replicate this, create a template uh, by which you can use to calculate uh, the payback period. I hope you found this uh, uh, easy to understand. If you don't, or if you go through the video again, you definitely will find it easy to understand and implement. If you have questions, feel free to comment below. Um, uh, if you have uh, other comments, maybe not questions, but suggestions, please uh, be generous enough to comment below. Thank you very much for watching and see you in another video.